hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri, where I am freezing. Uh, well, uh, you know, I don't know why. I went out a little earlier, but mm, then all of a sudden now I'm chilled, chilled right down to the bone. Anyway, went fishing today. Yes, sir, we sure did. And you know what we caught? A couple of them. Yep, a couple of them. Snags. That's right. Well, you know how it goes. Some days you do better than other days. It's a little windy, but that's okay. Well, the weather's going to be coming up and getting warm, so we will be having our chance to go fish, 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 fishing. And, well, that's what we'll be doing. Me and the son and the and his wife went fishing. Thomas and, and Nikki, we all went fishing together. And well, we uh, we pretty much. I, I got cold, so I had to come home. So anyway, it was a bu- a bum. It was a bust day, but that's okay. There's always tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Anyway, uh, you know what? Today is Monday, April the 20th, meaning I've got a happy birthday shout-out going out to Charles Goss and Oliver, my grandson, Oliver Briscoe. And so without further ado, here is a birthday song for you. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So happy birthday, I must say. Yeah, I know Charles and Oliver. Hey, I got a brand new year today. So, hey, I heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, you're one more year older today. So, happy birthday to you, I say. And many more. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday, Oliver. Okay, and then I got some uh, poke outs. Yeah, Facebook pokes. Poke shout outs going out to Dana Jennings, Melissa Holtz, and Karen Sanders. You yeah, poke me, I have a poke you back. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Alrighty then, let's see. I know I'm not supposed to be singing. Uh, I'm not supposed to be doing the news. Well, I'm supposed to be doing the news. Well, I am going to be doing the weather forecast for the St. Charles viewing area. Yes, there's weather forecast for the St. Charles viewing area. Well, no wonder I'm cold. It's only 67 degrees. A while ago, the sun was shining. Now it's all gommed up again. Oh, gummy. Origami. Origami. Anyway, uh, tonight's temperatures, uh, tonight's going to be partly cloudy skies. Lows are around 46 degrees Fahrenheit and winds west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then for Tuesday, April the 21st, sunny skies, highs around 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tuesday night. Partly cloudy skies, lows around 46 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds light and variable. Wednesday, April the 22nd, partly cloudy uh, early, followed by increasing clouds with showers developing later in the day. Highs around 69 degrees Fahrenheit, winds south to southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 50%. Then Wednesday night, uh, rain is likely, lows around 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be out of the east uh, to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 70%. Rainfall around a quarter of an inch. And then for your Thursday, April 23rd forecast, rain or showers early with some sunshine later on in the day. Highs around 71 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour, chances of rain 50%, then partly cloudy skies overnight with 52 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds east to northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Friday, April 24th, increasing clouds with showers arriving sometime in the afternoon, highs around uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, Winds are going to be east to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. Overcast skies uh, overnight with periodical showers. 
lows around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour, chances of rain 40%. And then Saturday, April 25th, to wrap up your five-day forecast, will be uh, overcast skies with rain showers at times, highs around 61 degrees Fahrenheit, winds are northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chances of rain 40%, chances of showers or a shower or two during the evening, followed by partly cloudy skies late at night, lows around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north to northwest at 20 10 to 20 miles per hour, chances of rain 30%. This has been your five-day forecast weather uh, for the St. Charles Viewing Area, brought to you by Wallace Resale. Yes, Wallace Resale on Facebook. Go on over to Wallace Resale and take a gander at their website, and you can find the items that you would like to purchase. And then let them know on their messenger and Rick or uh, Dawn will get back to you. That is correct. Today's story time is uh, Mr. The Master Cat or Puss in Boots, whichever you prefer. I tell you, folks, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the story because, well, it looks like another long one, like yesterday. And yesterday, I ended up being on here for an hour. And, well, we don't want to do an hour's length of uh, uh, programming, right? So here we go. <laughs> Gather the kids around the television. Hey, everybody, come on in. It's time for the children's story. So here we go. Once upon a time, there was a miller who left no more riches to, to the three sons he had than his mill. His ass... Oh, his milk, his ass, and his cat. Uh, the division was soon made. Neither the lawyer nor the attorney was sent sent for. And they would soon have eaten up all the poor property. Well, the eldest had the mill, the second had the donkey, and the youngest nothing but the cat. Now, the youngest, as we can understand, was quite unhappy at having so poor of a share. But my brothers, he said, may get their living handsomely enough by joining their stocks together. But for my part, when I have eaten up my cat and made me a muff of his skin, I must die of hunger. Well, the cat, who heard all this without appearing to take any notice, said to him with a grave and serious air, Do not thus afflict yourself, my master. You have nothing else to do but to give me a bag and get a pair of boots made for me, that I may scamper through the brambles. And you shall see that you have not so poor a portion in me as you think. Though the cat's master did not think much of what he had said, he had seen him play such cunning tricks to catch rats and mice, hanging himself by his heels or hiding himself in the meal, to make believe he was dead, that he did not altogether disappear, despair of his helping him in his misery. Now, when the cat had what he had asked for, he booted himself very gallantly, and putting his bag about his neck, he held the strings of it in his two front forepaws and went into a warren where he was a great where a great number of rats 
rabbits where there was a great number of rabbits. He put bran and sow so thistles into his bag and stretched out at length as if he were dead. He waited for some young rabbits not yet acquainted with the deceit the the seat of the world to to come and rummage his bag for what he had put into it scarcely was his was he settled but he had what he wanted a rash and foolish young rabbit jumped into his bag and the monsieur pussycat Immediately drawing clothes the strings, took him and killed him at once. Now, proud of his prey, he went with it to the place and asked to speak with the king. He was showing up, shown upstairs into his majesty's apartment, and making a low bow to the king, he said, I have brought you, sir, a rabbit which my noble lord, the master of my carabus, the master of carabus, from that was, for that was the title which Puss was pleased to give his master. He commanded me to present to your majesty from, from him. Tell thy master, said the king, that I thank him and that I am pleased with his gift. Another time he went and hid himself among some standing corn, still holding his bag open, and when a brace of partridge ran into it, he drew the strings and so caught them both. Then he went, to, went and made a presentation of these to the king, and as he had done before, uh, with the rabbit which he took to the in the warren, the king in like manner received the partridges with great pleasure and ordered his servant to reward him. Now the cat continued for two or three months thus to carry his majesty from time to time some of his master's gains. And one day, when he knew that the king was to take the air along the riverside with his daughter, the most beautiful princess in the world, he said to his master, If you will follow my advice, your fortune is made. You have nothing else to do but go and bathe in the river just at the spot I shall show you, and leave the rest to me. Well, the Marquis of Carabas did what the cat advised him to do, without knowing what could be the use of doing it. And while he was bathing, the king pa passed by, and the cat cried out with all his might, Help, help, my lord, the Marquis of Carabas is drowning. At this noise the king put his head out of the coach window, and seeing the cat who had so often brought him game, he commanded his guards to run immediately to the assistance of his lordship, the Marquis of Carabas. And while they were drawing the poor Marquis out of the river, the cat came up to the coach and told the king that while his master was bathing, there came by some rogues who ran off with his clothes. Though he had carried out thieves, though he had cried out thieves, thieves several times as loud as he could, the cunning cat had hidden the clothes under a great stone, and the king immediately commanded the officers of his wardrobe to run and fetch one of his best suits for the Lord Marquis of Carabas. Now the king was extremely polite to him, and as the fine clothes he had given him set off his good looks, 
for he was well made and handsome the king's daughter found him very much to her liking and the marquis of carabas had no sooner cast two or three respectful and somewhat tender glances than she fell in love with him to distraction the king would have him come into the coach and take part in the airing so the cat overjoyed to see his plan begin to succeed marched on before and meeting with some countrymen who were mowing a meadow and he said to them good people you who are mowing if you do not tell the king that the meadow you mow belongs to my lord marquis of carabas you shall be chopped as small as herbs for the pot so the king did not fail to ask the mowers to whom the meadows they were mowing belonged to my lord marquis of carabas answered they all together for the cat's threat had made them afraid you have a good property there said the king to the marquis of carabas he you see sire uh, said the marquis this is a meadow which never fails to yield a plentiful harvest every year and the, mas the master cat who went still on before met some repairers reapers and said to them good people you who are reaping if you do not say that all this corn belongs to the marquis of carabas you shall be chopped as small as herbs for the pot and then the king was who passed by a moment after wished to know to to whom belonged all that corn which he then saw to my lord marquis of carabas replied the reapers and the king was very well pleased with it as well as with the marquis whom he had congratulated thereupon and the master cat who went always before said the same thing to all he met and the king was astonished at the vast estates of the Lord Marquis of Carabas. Monsignor Pussycat came at last to a stately castle, in the master of which was an org, and the richest ever known. And for all the lands which the king had then passed through belonged to this castle, and the cat who had taken care of uh, to inform himself who this orc was and what he could could do asked to speak with him saying he could not pass so near his castle without having a honor the honor of paying his respects to him while well, the orc received him as civilly as an orc could do and made him sit down i have been assured said the cat that you have the gift of being able to change yourself into all sorts of creatures you have a mind to that you can for example transform yourself into a lion or an elephant and the like that is true answered the org roughly and to convince you you shall see me now become a lion so puss was so terrified at the sight of a lion so near him that he immediately climbed into the gutter now without much trouble and danger because of his boots which were of no use at all to him from walking upon the tiles a little while after when puss saw that the 
Org had resumed his natural form, he came down and owned and owned he had been very much frightened, and owned up that he had been very much frightened. I have moreover been informed that the cat, but I, said the cat, but I know not how to believe it, that you have also the power to take on you the shape of the smallest animals, for example, to change yourself into a rat or a mouse. But I must own you to, I must own to you, I take this as impossible. Impossible, cried the org. You shall see. And at that same time, he changed himself into a mouse and began to run about the floor. And Puss no sooner perceived this than he fell upon him and ate him up. Meanwhile, the king, who saw as he passed this fine castle of the orgs, had a mind to go into it. And Puss, who heard the noise of his majesty's coach coming over the drawbridge, ran out and said to the king, Your majesty is welcome to the castle of my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. What, my lord Marquis? cried the king. And does this castle also belong to you? There can be nothing finer than this courtyard and all the stately buildings which surround it. Let us see the interior, if you please. And the Marquis gave his hand to the young princess and followed the king, who went first. They passed in the great hall, where they found a magnificent collection which the org had prepared for his friends who were that very day to visit him but dared not to enter knowing the king was there his majesty charmed with the good qualities of my lord of carabas as was also his daughter who had fallen violently in love with him and seeing the vast estate he possessed said to him it will be owing to yourself only my lord marquis if you are not my son-in-law and the marquis with a low bow accepted the honor which his majesty conferred upon him and forthwith that very same day married the princess Puss became a great lord and never ran after mice any more, except for his diversions. And there you have it, the end, and they all lived happily ever after. They sure did. Puss and Boots. Puss in Boots, not Puss and Boots. And so, I do believe, let's see what time we got here. Yeah. That brings us up to the portion of the program called Our Daily Bread. And today's devotion is called The Singing Revolution. Yes, sir. Hey, if you're keeping up with the Bible with Briscoe, which I really hope you are, which would be the Bible with Briscoe 2020, uh, we'll be covering 2 Samuel 9 through 11 and Luke 15, 11 through 32. All right. Well, all righty then. Um, let's see, Psalms 42, 1 through 5 would be, uh, the singing revolution. So here we go, Psalm 42, 1 through 5. As the deer pants from streams of water, so may, so my soul pants for you, my God. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. 
how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One. With shouts of joy and praise among the festive throngs, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him and my Savior and my God. And there you have it, Psalm 42, 1 through 5. All right, that concludes the Shin Show for the day, my friends. I've got one song for you, which would be well, goodbye, my friends, it's a time to go. I say goodbye, my friends, it's a time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends, goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Bresco saying hello and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shin Show, and as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So be blessed and come back and see me tomorrow because, well, hey, I'll be here, and I hope that you are.